Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and these are all of the books that I ended up reading in September. Okay, so September was quite the raw wide range of books for me. I had three DNFs and then I had many all-time favorites. So let's dive right on into these books. So we're gonna start out with my DNFs, of course. <laughs> One book that is no shocker to many that I DNF'd is The Pirate and the Pagan by Virginia Henley. Um, I was on Jess and um, Samantha, their uh, book club. They have a book club called The Historical Hellions. I went on their book club with Riley from Riley Marie and we all despise this book. <laughs> I got to like 30% and I messaged like Samantha and I was like, I think I'm done. I think I'm good. This isn't good. <laughs> and so all of us either also DNF'd it or just like skim read the rest. It's a historical romance that is just filled with lies and treachery and like characters that are not appealing. Not a single character in this book. Like I couldn't root for any of them. Did not like it, did not care for it. The cover is the only beautiful thing or good thing about this book, everything else. Is honestly trash. Sorry, not sorry. Then sadly I had to DNF a alien romance called Kidnapped by the Alien Prince by Tori Collette. This cover intrigued me. Alien romance book obviously. Um, and so I was very intrigued by it. It's on Kindle Unlimited. I downloaded it, got to like 30% and I was really loving the beginning of this but then the couple got together like 30% of the way through. Very insta-loving, no angst whatsoever. They just looked at each other and was like you're it for me. And then what else is gonna happen in the rest of the book? Like, I didn't really care. If they were already together by 30%, what is the point? <laughs> what is the point? I get if like a couple gets together at like 70 or 80% and there's like a little chunk left, I totally get that. I actually personally love that. If there's like 70% left of the book and like you're already an established couple, I don't really care anymore, so that's why I DNF'd this one. <laughs> I also DNF'd Charcoal Notes by Grace Harper. This was on my September TBR, and I think this might be just like a put down for now. I don't know, honestly. I might never pick this up again, who knows. But this was a book I was really interested in because the heroine um, claims that she's waiting for marriage before she does stuff you know um and so the hero has been infatuated with his friend this woman for forever they work at a record label company he like finally wants to uh be with her but she can't like believe it because he's been with so many women i just like i literally got a chapter or two in and i couldn't stand it <laughs> um like at the time i was not in the mood literally at all. The hero is probably my main gripe. We only got his perspective from what I've read so far. He's been pining over this woman for years. Where at, like something that was like the real kicker for me that I was like, okay, this is too much. I'm just done right now is um, his friend comes up to him and is like, hey, you're gonna tell, uh, what's the girl's name? Tara. He's like, are you gonna tell Tara that you got a tattoo of her name on your body yesterday? And like at this point he hasn't confessed any of his feelings he hasn't like they haven't been together they're not together at all and the other day he got literally her name tattooed on his arm without her knowing and them not being in a relationship and he's just like she can't see it so i have to wear long sleeves every day i'm just like why did you get it <laughs> like i don't understand so it just that was like the chair on top of me being just just being like uh okay i'm done <laughs> We'll see if I eventually pick this one up because I do want to read about a heroine who has the same views as me when it comes to marriage and stuff like that. But I was honestly very pissed off by this hero and the writing style was just not for me. Next, I have Off Limits by Ruby Dixon. We're finally on two books that I actually did complete. This is the first book in her Bedlam Butchers series. It's a motorcycle club series. So each book in the series is a very short novella. And so this one is about Lucky and Solo. Lucky is the younger sister of the president of the motorcycle club. And um, Solo is kind of like the loner dude of the motorcycle cycle club one night both of them are staying late at like their clubhouse and they kind of get into some trouble and solo ends up rescuing lucky and like bringing her to his house and having her stay over with him and that night he like finally confesses his feelings for her and it's like i'm never letting you go i've been crushing on you hardcore for a very long time and she's like what i have too and they finally like get together it's pretty hot i feel like the other book that i read in this series book number two um was pretty hot as well so i feel like ruby dixon can do well with her steam <laughs> this was super fun to read about i just wanted more from it honestly from it being like a very short novella i feel like it would have been an amazing full-length book but it was not sadly so off to book number two in the series which is packing double this one is about a woman named kitty she is a 
bar waitress. There she gets a run in with some bad motorcycle dudes and the two motorcycle presidents, because there's two of them, of the motorcycle club that I talked about in the last book, the two presidents come up and like kind of like save her and both of them decide to keep her because in this club a lot of the times they're in partners and so they both decide to have her so this is an mfm romance again like the other one this one was very enjoyable i liked it a little bit more than the previous one probably just because it was a little bit hotter honestly <laughs> um but i just wish there was more because i feel like there's a lack of character development and i just I wanted more. I want it to be longer. So I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Then I have Dark Wild Night by Christina Lauren. This is the third book in the Wild Season series. This is about the last couple that we met in book number one. In book number one in this series, you have three girlfriends and three guy friends. They end up meeting one night in Vegas. They all get drunk and end up getting drunkenly married to one another. And so this was about Lola and Oliver, who you met in those previous books um but ever since they got their marriage annulled in book one they have been super 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 close friends so this is a friends to lovers romance these two people really connect in graphic novels and comics because lola has just published one that's very popular and it's about to become a movie and oliver just opened his own comic book shop which is very 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 cool and so they really love and gush over their love of comics and graphic novels so these two have been crushing on each other hardcore since like day one that they met each other like they never have revealed their feelings until this book i gave this book a three out of five stars it kind of let me down the beginning of it was great with the tension and the angst and then once they like got together and like revealed their feelings for one another like it kind of fell flat for me and i was very annoyed by the heroine there's one point where they get together and she kind of like changes her mind and it i can't stand that <laughs> cannot. I thought this book would be my favorite in this series because it's a friends to lovers but it fell completely flat for me and so far it's my least favorite out of the series. I then read Tofu Cowboy by Lola West. Isn't this cover just so beautiful? I wish the book was as good as this cover. <laughs> this is about Luke and Maddie and Luke and Maddie end up meeting at one of uh, the local university's art classes. Luke is a student in the art class and Maddie is the nude model. However, Luke is a very rugged cowboy and he thinks that his family would make fun of him if they knew that he loves art so much so he keeps his art life a secret. But when he first sees Maddie as their nude model, he is like utterly infatuated with her. And he realizes that she is also a hairdresser in their town and the first day he walks into the hairdresser he walks in with his brothers and he has to pretend he doesn't know this woman because he doesn't want his brothers to find out that he does art and so she's very mad at him that she would that he would like ignore her like this when after their class he kind of like flirted with her and wanted to get to know her and so it was like a complete 180 for him and she was so upset obviously she had the right to be but then he explains the situation and everything and then they finally uh get together i thought this was cute um i love this concept of a guy falling in love and being totally longing for and infatuated with the model of his class maddie also has some uh body dysmorphia and there's some triggers in here for eating disorders just by the way and there is also a discussion of infertility so there's a few trigger warnings in there for you maddie decides to become a nude model to hopefully gain more confidence in herself and in her body which is something i loved i love that discussion in here my main issue was that this book was too short for the development that i wanted everything happened too fast everything got together too fast and then ended too fast it's just too fast too short for me i'm also not that big of a fan of the classic i'm going to break up with you to protect you from myself trope and that happened in here <laughs> every time that happens i just roll my eyes i'm like why i, I don't want that to be the third act breakup at all and unfortunately that's what happened in this book so i loved the concept of the book but i didn't necessarily love the book as a whole so i ended up giving this one just 3.5 out of 5 stars i then read the sinner by jr ward this is book number 18 in the black dagger brotherhood series this is a vampire romance series where there is a secret society of vampires that humans don't know about the black dagger brotherhood is a group of vampires who are tasked to protect the vampire race from things called lessers which are kind of like deformed zombie-like vampires very strange i know i don't want to talk too much about this because this is book number 18 in a series but this is about a vampire named sin who is very close to the black darker brotherhood um and his romance with a human woman who does not know that she is going to be transitioning into a vampire very soon she's also a journalist and when they first meet each other they are completely infatuated with one another however sin has some struggles from his past that affect his daily life i feel like this wasn't my favorite in the series because sin is very 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 much like z and his story and his background is very similar to z 
um, from book three and just like I felt like it was kind of ripping Z off a little bit but that's just how I feel about it so yeah it wasn't my favorite in the series it felt a little bit redundant to other books this more felt like a three book overall but the ending of this book was so flippin' good the ending of this was cherry on top amazing so that's why I bumped up a star for me <laughs> that ending was so good it was good and like I personally don't I can't stand when authors do that when they like have like a mediocre mediocre book but then can top it off with an amazing ending I can't stand that but I have to appreciate it because the ending of this book was beautiful to me I then finally picked up Secrets of a Summer Night by Lisa Kleypas this is the first book in the Wallflower series I just want to say the audiobooks for this series are freaking fantastic they are so good if you want to listen to the Wallflower series please do if you've never been into audiobooks before and you love historical romances, would you love these audiobooks? They are so good. So this is, yeah, the first book in the Wallflower series. So each book in this series is about one of four girlfriends. You see them meet at the beginning of this book, but they're basically four wallflowers that happen to just basically sit at the edge of the dance floor at every single party, ball, gala, soiree, whatever you want to call it. And so the two, the four of them finally get together and are like, hey, how about we help each other find husbands? And so the first one is about Annabelle. And the reason why she is a wallflower and no one wants to ask her to dance or to marry her is because um, she has like no money. She has no money. And so men don't really want to marry a woman with no money. So this is her hate to love romance with a man named Simon Hunt. And so Simon is a very wealthy man however he is not looked at well in society because he was not born into his wealth he made his wealth which is not something that the aristocracy like in this time period they want to hang out with and be with uh people who were born into the same society as them it was just hilarious annabelle cannot stand simon but simon is utterly completely smitten with this woman and wants her so badly and will do anything to have her. <laughs> I thought this was a beautiful romance story and a great start to this series. So I ended up giving this one just a four out of five stars. Oh, also I wanna say, um, the uh, caretaking scene in here is one of the best caretaking scenes I've ever read. If you love caretaking scenes, you're gonna love this. It was so good. Like the caretaking scene in here is when the heroine finally realizes, huh, uh, I may not hate this man. <laughs> I may actually love him. Oh, it was so good. So good. I also read book number two in that series, which is It Happened One Autumn. This one is about Lillian and Marcus. Lillian is one of the wallflowers that I talked about a second ago. And the reason why she is a wallflower and why no one will ask her to dance or marry her is because she is an American. And no one from the uh, British aristocracy is wanting to marry a uh, American woman. Even if she is filthy rich, they don't want to marry an American woman. And so Marcus, who is a lord, a well-to-do lord, is one of those men who doesn't want anything to do with Lillian. He doesn't like how brash and upfront she is and how honest she is. Like that's not how women act in London, in their society. And so he cannot stand her. And then they get into this like compromising position at one point where they're forced to like hide behind a bush in very pr close proximity. And Marcus just like gets this overwhelming urge to kiss her. And he has no idea why. And so they kiss for a while behind this bush and they break apart and they're like what just happened because both of them cannot stand the other person <laughs> after that obviously everything changes and their enemies to lovers slowly very slowly forms into romance <laughs> i thought this was super cute i really enjoyed this one i also thought this was a great book when it came to different social classes because she is an american woman um and then he is a well-to-do lord but i just overall really like this one as well i gave this one also a four out of five stars i then picked up joe and laurie by margaret stoll and melissa de la cruz this is a young adult book which i haven't read a young adult book in quite a long time <laughs> i just had to pick this one up because if you didn't know little women right here is one of my favorite books of all time and so this is a retelling of little women but what if joe and laurie got together instead in the end because if you know little women you know what happens um but this was a very cute young adult story i personally really enjoyed this i thought this book was super inventive and very unique and i really like how the authors decided to like kind of like change and warp the little woman story to their own creation i thought it was very cool however there were things in here that i wanted so badly Beth is not in this book at all and it broke my heart. <laughs> it broke my heart because Beth, oh, if you know Beth, I love Beth. She wasn't in this book at all and I was so upset. <laughs> 
I overall really liked this, but the ending was way too rushed for me, so I ended up giving this book just four out of five stars. I then, of course, read Ruby Dixon's newest release, Sam's Secret, which is book number 15 in the Ice Home series. So since this is book number 15, I'm not going to talk too much about it, but this is the spinoff to Ice Planet Barbarians. And so this is the romance between Sam and I'm not going to say who, because it's kind of like a little bit of a secret who Sam's romance is with, but I personally really liked this. I thought it was so sweet, so cute, and I feel like Sam's romance is, is so well deserved because if you know Sam in this series, she is very standoffish to men or males on this island. She doesn't want to be touched. She doesn't want to be in a relationship. She's told people many times, I don't want a mate. Um, and so she comes across a guy she hasn't seen in quite a long time on the beach. Her cooey starts to hum and she is terrified and she runs away. And the guy fi slowly realizes what's going on and follows up and chases after her. And then they seek refuge in the fruit cave, if you know what the fruit cave is. <laughs> I wanna say there are a few trigger warnings in here. There are trigger warnings for previous domestic abuse. There's some PTSD in here. And there's a trigger warning for on-page murder. So please be aware of those. But I overall really enjoyed this one and I gave it a four out of five stars. I then read Stolen Air by Sophie Lark. This is the second book in the Brutal Birthright series. This is a mafia romance series. This is the very reluctant romance between Miko and Nessa. Their family their mafia families are at war. Nessa's brother ended up killing Miko's adoptive father. Miko decides to get back at his their family by kidnapping Nessa and keeping her in this giant mansion house that he has and keeping her for a while. He's planning on killing her, but those plans might change when he realizes he might be in love with this woman. The longer that Nessa gets to stay in this mansion and the longer she gets to know Miko, she realizes that she might be in love with her beast beast-esque captor. I feel like this was a great reimagining of Beauty and the Beast. I also really recommend reading book one before this one because I feel like you get a lot of backstory when it comes to their families and stuff like that. I really recommend reading it in order. I overall really enjoy this one and if you want a good contemporary mafia Beauty and the Beast retelling, this one is definitely the way to go. I gave it a four out of five stars. I then read Highlander Most Wanted by Maya Banks. This is the second book to Never Seduce a Scott, which is one of my favorite historical romances of all time. I can't really go too much into the summary because you have to read book one to understand this one because there are some things that happen in book one that reflect what happens in book two so like what happens in book one like affected things that will happen in book two if that makes sense the heroine in here she was severely abused by a man you meet in book one and she finally escapes that man and escapes that life and she comes across um bowen montgomery he ends up rescuing her and saving her from that horrible life she's been in. I thought this was written beautifully. Maya Banks is be a beautiful writer and I need to read more from her. This is my second book that I've read by her and I definitely am looking into more. I love romance books where you get to fully see on page these two people fully like start to get to know one another but then you get to slowly see fully their process of falling in love with one another and this one did it beautifully. There are some trigger warnings in here. You have a trigger warning for previous sexual assault and abuse and physical violence bullying from other people. So yeah, this one is a little dark at points, so please be aware. But overall, I really like this one. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I then read my member pick for September, uh, which was Ruthless Stranger by Maggie Cole. This was recommended, obviously, by Jen from the Book Refuge. Of course, I flipping loved this. <laughs> This is the first book in Maggie Cole's Mafia War series, and I'm definitely going to be reading more, of course. <laughs> this is a romance between Aspen and Maxim. Aspen just finalized her divorce to a very horrible man, um, and so her and her three girlfriends decide to go on a trip to Las Vegas to kind of like celebrate her divorce um and she has this conversation with her friends where she's like i basically want to have one night done with a man um i don't know who he is i'd wear a blindfold the whole night i want this fantasy of us just being together and not knowing who this man is but he'll help me have the night of my life and so maxim who may or may not be involved with the mafia or has some kind of involvement with the mafia overhears this when he is in vegas for his brother's bachelor party and he decides to uh, go up to her friends and tell them that he is up for the job. He wants to do that. He wants to fulfill this fantasy for this woman. And so they spend a wonderful night together, but then they end up parting ways, thinking they will never see each other again, even though afterward they're devastated that they will never see each other again, but they made rules at the beginning of the night and they're not gonna break them. And then lo and behold, uh, Aspen goes into work the day after she comes back from Las Vegas and uh, Maxim, is sitting in her in her boardroom. She recognizes his voice and everything, and she knows that that is that man. 
and they start up a relationship. This is truly an epic romance, y'all. I thought this was so great. We normally don't get romances between characters who are in their late 30s and 40s and I really like that. I love seeing that representation of older different characters. I feel like we definitely need more books with characters of this age range obviously. The way that they met was honestly so ingeniously done well. Like it was so good. The beginning of this book was hot fire. Oh, butterflies in my stomach. Oh, so good. I did not want to put it down. I was honestly swooning while I was reading this book and I cannot wait to read more of Maggie Cole. I of course gave this book a five out of five stars. I then read Ever After Always by Chloe Lee. This is book number three in the Bergman Brothers series and this is a marriage in trouble romance. I honestly feel like each book in this series just gets better and better and better. This is a romance between Aiden and Freya and they've been married for I believe like 10, 10 years I want to say however long, I don't remember the specific number, um, but you get to meet them in some of the previous books. And they have a perfectly wonderful marriage, as you can see in the previous books. But then you read about in this one, how Aiden has kind of been prioritizing his work way more than his wife. And she is honestly done with it. So at the beginning of this book, she kicked Aiden out of the house for a few days in hopes of like kickstarting his need to fix his life. <laughs> so this is about how their romantic relationship has changed throughout the years because no one's relationship stays the same for 10 years. So they, they're they coming to realize that their relationship has changed in minute little ways and they figure out what they need to do to accommodate to that, to show affection to one another. And they come to realize how much they truly love and care for the other person. This was honestly really beautiful. I think this might be my favorite Marriage in Trouble romance because I feel like um, Chloe Lee's just did an amazing job with this. I really believed and again on page got to see these two fully fall back in love with one another. It was beautiful. If you want a good marriage and trouble romance this one is the way to go. I of course gave this book a five out of five stars. And lastly my favorite book of September was A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Levine. This is a fantasy romance and oh my word this is so good. <laughs> this is also an enemy to lovers marriage of convenient romance between Matic and Yven. And they have kind of like, I don't wanna say rivaling families, but they kind of do. Matic like caught wind of a rumor that Yven is the reason for his parents' deaths. And so he like goes in search of Yven to kidnap her um, and kill her in retribution. However, Yven kind of like finds him first and is like, hey, I hate my family. They're the ones who actually did this to your parents, not me. And I hate my father so much. And this is how we can get back at them. And so she proposes that they get married um, and this will really piss off her dad. And after they get married, they can go out in search of him to kill him in retribution. And through them carrying out this plan, uh, the two of them start to fall in love with one another, again, very reluctantly. <laughs> I loved this. I did not want this book to end literally at all. <laughs> I found myself listening to this book and reading it at the same time, which is a rare thing to happen for me. I very rarely do that because I feel like whenever I'm listening to an audiobook, I have to do something else. But this one, I was just so sucked into the story. I wanted to know everything that I had to read it at the same time I was listening to it because it was so flipping good. Yvonne and Matic are truly soulmates and you got to see that in this book. And if you want like a true soulmate romance, this one is it. I love Yvonne, the heroine in here. She's a total boss. I love her. She suffered abuse from her dad. So he shattered her knee and so she walks with a limp and she's very sh like a very skinny, tiny, kind of like frail looking woman. And people can't believe that this little tiny woman who has a limp is a queen. But man, she exude this presence out of her. She exudes this power. She exudes this leadership role and Maddox just can't help but be in awe of her. And it's like, I have so much that I need to learn from you. And so they kind of like teach each other things. Like she teaches him how to become a king and he teaches her how to be a warrior. And oh, <laughs> it was so good. I want everyone to read this uh, so badly because I feel like the hype for this book is so well-deserved. Uh, there are a few trigger warnings in here. You have a trigger warning for death of an animal on page and death in general, there's a trigger warning. And there's also a trigger warning in here for a miscarriage. Overall, I love this book. Five flipping stars, amazing, a new favorite. I need to find more fantasy romances that give me this feeling because hunky doozy, amazing, amazingness. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all the books that I ended up reading in September. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.